So this here is the Tronxy X5 SA. What we're going to be doing with it is combining it with another printer called the Ratrig VCore 4. This is a really cool three lead screw tri bed leveling printer, which allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. So I decided to go with that printer instead of a Voron, just because I kind of like the look of it. And I decided that's the one that I want instead of a Voron. So this one's going to be a little bit different than your average uh, custom 3D printer. So let's just go over the specs of what this guy has right now. So it has a 400 by 400 millimeter bed. So I'm just going to hop out of frame because I am pretty much cut off of this guy here. So as you can tell, this guy has a huge bed. So it's 400 by 400 millimeters. So that's roughly a time and a half bigger than the regular X1C and P1S. And if I remember correctly, it's still 50 millimeters bigger on both the X and the Y than the new Bamboo H2D. That one's got two nozzles. This one's only got one, so that one's a lot cooler and stuff, but this is still a great place to start. It also features a Core XY kinematic system, which we will be keeping, but we're not going to be using the exact same stuff. We're going to be making our own separate one. We're going to be reusing all the extrusions. We're going to be reusing the stepper motors for the time being, but we are not going to be reusing these linear rails, these linear slides, or the lead screws because we got the custom ones that work with the V Core 4. So here is where you come in. I'm going to get you to pick the color of the printer. So we've got a yellow, a white, and a blue. So I'll get you to make a color combination and then I'll get you guys to come up with a name for it. And that will be what this printer is known as. As of now, it is the Franken printer, but who knows what it'll be called next time. It'll be up to you. So now let's go over how this printer is going to look and what parts you're going to be able to color coat. Here is the V Core 4. So the team that the Rat Rig team actually provides the full CAD file. So I was able to kind of use this as a great reference when I was designing my own. So I kind of took certain parts of it and kind of modified it to work with my own. So this one here uses 3030 extrusion, but the printer that we have uses 2020. So there was a handful of changes we needed to make that way. And then there's just a handful of changes design wise that I also wanted to make as well. So what I did is I started off with the original design for the uh, Tronxy X5 SA Pro, and then kind of took certain parts of it and started to kind of make it work. So some of the key things that I kept are so these blocks here are more or less the same as the rat rig ones. I did have to make some small changes to them. We will be reusing the same heat bed from the original uh, printer here, but we're more or less using the same motion system for X, Y, and the Z as well. I had to do something down here where on the original printer, these are able to fit within the bottom area of the printer. But what I did for mine is I decided that I'm only going to be buying a, a box of 600 millimeter extrusion, which buying a box of 10 of those was able to pretty much complete the entire printer for me. So the entire design here isn't fully completed yet. I still have some placeholders and stuff in here from the original version that is provided by the Rat Rig team. But what we're going to be doing later in uh, the episodes is we're going to be making a custom CNC plate for these guys here and there as well. So we're going to be using the Carvera Air to do that as well as in a different one, we're going to learn to design a PCB with a Carvera Air and remake this PCB that they have here because it is fairly expensive to import to Canada or make, or it's just going to be a lot easier making it. And we can order these limit switches here and make the connect or get the connectors ourselves and do the entire thing DIY, which should be pretty cool. So we'll go over the entire process there. So I'm also going to be making some small changes to this guy here because this one currently uses the Eddy Current Probe but I'm not sure if the bed itself will work with that because it is going to be the aluminum bed with a glass on top. So we might switch that out to just like a regular uh, proxy sensor that came with the original printer because if it worked for that, it should work for the regular one as well. And we're just going to have to order all these parts. So more or less, the purchase parts are very similar to the original uh, at core, V Core 4. And the only things that we're changing are just to make stuff fit with the uh, 20 millimeter extrusion. So you kind of see... On this one here, I've got this block here compared to the original one that they had inside here, which is fairly different because they were working with this type of stuff. So there's been a handful of stuff that I've had to kind of reverse engineer and remake to kind of work properly with my entire system here. And the entire design isn't done, but by the time we get to that spot there, it should all be done. So what we're going to be doing for the next episode here is we're going to pretty much be building up the entire frame 
as well as installing some of these custom 3D printed parts. And it should be pretty fun. So let's get right into the disassembly of the original machine so we can get clo one step closer to building the new one. So here's everything that we salvaged. We got a bunch of extrusion, we got some linear rails, as well as some of the miscellaneous aluminum pieces and the linear rods and lead screws. So some of these we're gonna be reusing, other parts we won't be. Now here's the electronic components. We got the main enclosure with all the wires that are tucked inside. We also have the wiring harness for the extruder assembly. Then we also have the main component that we're going to be using is the big 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter heat bed. And we also have our five stepper motors that we're going to be reusing. So before you leave, don't forget to choose a color you think would suit this 3D printer well and leave a name suggestion along with the colors that you chose. So the parts that you're going to be choosing the color for are the ones kind of in the light gray colors. So you'll see the like the little hex shape pieces, all the ones that mount the motors and the one currently in black that one will also be one of the chosen colors so have fun with it and i'm looking forward to see you next time please like comment and subscribe have a good one